Hello again, 2020 users. Um, so I know it's been a while since I made a video for you, but um, just been been busy. Um, so first thing I want to do is just uh, apologize. I just want to let you guys know I, I actually do have uh, a different computer now. Um, I uh, did go into a different field for a short time, and anybody out there who does design knows that uh, when you do this kind of stuff, you just kind of come back to it. It's just, it's, it's addicting. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so I wanted to uh, make a video today. This video is going to be primarily based on uh, lighting because I know lighting can be one of the most frustrating things in 2020. Uh, and, and I don't even have all the answers. I just have some answers. If any of you guys have any answers to uh, the... Uh, to anything that I bring up that I don't have the answer for, then please feel free to um, say so, because I'm always open to having some information put out there, and if you have more information, I'll make sure I shout you out um, if I use it in another video. So um, so what I wanted to focus on, like I said, is lighting. Um, lighting not only in just the general sense, but also in your high definition uh, renderings, because one of the most frustrating things that can happen is you spend, especially if you don't have a really high-end computer, uh, you spend you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes or more waiting for a high-definition rendering, and you find out that your lighting was way off, whether it was like really, really high or really, really low, it was over, over um, exposed or underexposed, and it just becomes extremely frustrating because you put a lot of time into that, and then you're trying to figure out how to fix it, and how do you fix it? Uh, well, basically that's what I want to go over today and a couple other things about lighting in general. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is just go over the, the just the lighting in general. And now, just to let you guys know, a lot of this information was actually put out uh, in a recent video from 2020. If you're, if you're um, subscribed to them, uh, there was a video about, I think it was called uh, Designing on a Budget, and it was talking about you know saving time and blah, blah, blah. There's other, there's other things in there, but th this was one of the things. And I thought it was really important to put this out there because the video was like an hour long, and so for those of you who didn't really have the time to do that, I wanted to make this shorter video to go over this part of the video. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just go over just lighting in general. So we'll go over lighting in general when it comes to renderings. Um, so we'll go into we'll go into a rendering. So this is a this is rendering. So a couple of things I want to uh, go over. Well, actually, you know, let's just go right over the basics first. Um, so most of you probably already know most of this stuff, but I'm just going to go over it in general just so we can get it, make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, this light bulb here has to do with lighting effects. That's why it's called light effects. So this has everything to do with what you're seeing right now. And less to do with when you go into a, <laughs> a high quality rendering. Um, when you do a high quality rendering, the lighting changes, and that's one of the reasons why I want to go over this. So uh, when you go into the, the lighting... Uh, tab, the light effects tab, um, you'll see the sun. Uh, I personally don't use the sun too often because a lot of times it just does really wash out the whole picture. Um, not necessarily in this version of it, but when you do a high definition rendering, it, it seems to wash everything out. So I don't use it too much, but it is a good thing to have if you want to add some special effects. Um, and, and I've used it a couple of times. There's, there's a few ways you can use it. I can explain that in another video at another time possibly, but uh, there's another way you can use it that's really cool that can actually give you like a, a moonlight effect um, that I, I think is pretty cool. Um, so then you've got ceiling. Most of you know what this is. You turn this on, you can change it to whatever wattage you want, and it actually just puts this uh, ceiling light uh, up here. Not an actual physical light you can see, but it will actually just literally just light up wherever it is that you want it to light up. So if this is dark over here, or it's dark over here, you can put that ceiling light wherever you want for the intensity that you want. The scene. The ambient light intensity just literally just changes how bright the whole scene is, like this. Um, and that's really what it's about. The user light intensity, if you have under cabinet lighting or over cabinet lighting or any other kind of lighting in the you know, room that, that you have actually personally put in, uh, that will affect that. Uh, if you guys have noticed, uh, when you put under cabinet lighting in, it seems to be pretty bright and it, it will kind of become overbearing. The auto lighting intensity is actually when you uh, 
notice here, and I'm sure you've all noticed that on the walls and on the cabinets, there's these different lights that are automatically there. You kind of see these like kind of rounded lighting uh, features on the wall and on the cabinets, and, and that's that's what that is. Um, is it's just how bright that is. So you can actually change that because that also can be affected when you go into high definition rendering. Um, so you can change that 60 down to 5 um, and there's different reasons why you would change this to different settings and I'll go into a little bit more of that later too. Uh, and then the, the image exposure, the exposure if you click on that it actually what it does is it just kind of lets you just more it just kind of puts everything more in your hands uh, where you're, the, the things that would be overexposed or underexposed, underexposed uh, don't have as much uh, they're not as out of your hands anymore now, I don't personally like the way that it renders when you have this as much. Um, when you have the exposure, this is more for, for me, I use it more for when I'm going to print something. Um, and that's really what that's about. So those are the very basics as far as that goes. Um, but, one, but I, you know, the thing is, is like I said, obviously we've got this, this rendering here that looks a certain way with the lighting. And um, you don't really know what it's going to look like when you go to re-render. As you can see, I've got a slower computer now. Um, <laughs> and so that means that my high definition renderings go even slower. So sometimes it takes 15, 20 minutes for it to do a high definition rendering, which is the same exact lighting that you'll see if you do a 360 panoramic view. So if you try to do virtual reality uh, for your customer and you do this, whatever you see in a high definition rendering is gonna be the same thing. So I would definitely recommend doing what I'm about to show you before you do a 360 uh, panoramic. Uh, but one thing, one thing I wanna go over again real quick before I do that is when you go in and you actually create a door from a door wizard, so like if you go into openings and obstacles and you wanna create a, a much better, more than a generic door, a flat panel door or whatever, you wanna have some more control over what that door looks like, you go into doors and you do the uh, door wizard, you can place the door wherever you want and what it'll do is it'll actually give you the option to really customize this, which I, I love it. It's just a lot better. So if you go to white, you got your door frame, then you can pick a single or a double door. I usually use a single. And then you can choose what kind you want. I like the shaker, not the one panel. I actually like the six panel shaker. Uh, and then you can choose white. Uh, the handle, I usually like, well, for the, what I usually do, I usually use contemporary. And so you can really just alter it the way you want to like that. So now you got this, you can place it, blah, 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 whatever, okay. Now when you do this, they're a great, it's a great looking door. Uh, the thing is, is that when you do that, it's frustrating because you don't really realize that that actually has its own light attributes. So when you go into this rendering, you'll see here that there is light that actually comes out of here. Actually, this light you're seeing right here that's coming across the floor is actually lighting from this door right here. And so, what you're going to want to do, guys, just seriously, just do this right away. Just right click on it, go to the door, and go to light properties. When you go to light properties, go to the color, because it doesn't let you change the intensity. Just go to black and hit OK. And when you do that, it'll actually make it so that that is gone now. So you don't have to worry about that affecting how the lighting is going to be. And if you have a bunch of doors and you do it like that, it's just going to blow the room up with light. And it's going to be way too powerful. So I highly suggest you doing that. Now, as far as when you want to check for the lighting in the rendering, uh, if you don't want it to take an hour to check, uh, what you can do is actually bring this down as, little, as small as possible and then click on that. When you click on that, what it will do is it will make it so that the picture only renders this area. So you can't really make it bigger, you can't blow it up, but it at least lets you see what the lighting is going to be like and if there's any areas you need to work on, anything you need to change in there as far as the lighting goes. Um, and so what you'll do is uh, make it as small as possible, re-render it. I already actually have one of this exact rendering pulled up, uh, which is this one. So as you can see, uh, I actually don't really have many issues here, if any, as far as lighting goes. But as you can see, when you make it bigger, it doesn't actually get the picture bigger. So, uh, but it, really all it is is just to take a look and see how this is going to render as far as lighting goes, and it's really, really important. Um, okay, not really sure where that paused, but it just paused on me. So I'm just going to continue on. Um, what, but I want to go. Um, I want to go into. So now that we kind of covered the lighting in general, and then how to render a high rendering or a high quality rendering 
quicker so you can see how that lighting is. I highly recommend doing that, especially before you go and do a 360 panoramic, also known as virtual reality, because that takes a long time to do. And if you end up doing that and finding out it's wrong, it's so frustrating, um, especially if you have a lot of stuff going on in your picture. But um, one other thing I want to uh, talk about here too, just so you know, again, this is one of those things I don't have an answer for actually. Um, sometimes in a drawing, what you need to do in order to really, if you if you're looking at a, if you're looking at a, uh, let's say like a tray ceiling, right? So you've got multiple heights ceilings. So you've got one ceiling that's one height and one ceiling that's another height. But then you've got a tray ceiling and you've got a light in that tray ceiling. Uh, that comes down and you really want to replicate that, what you actually have to do is you have to do some 3D objects. And I don't want to go into that in this video to explain how that's done. I'm assuming that you know how to do it. If you don't, then please feel free to comment and I'll make a video about how to even do that. But you do three, so let's say there's a, let's say there's a tray ceiling right here in the kitchen, meaning that there's two different heights in that ceiling and there's a special shape that is, I guess, indented into the ceiling. Uh, to make it so it's higher and then to say that like that only comes here and then this ceiling's higher than this ceiling blah blah blah. So what you want to do is you want to make the whole ceiling the highest height so whatever this height is out here you want to make it the whole height and then after you're done doing your whole kitchen you'll do some 3D objects uh, to make that shape that you're wanting. The thing is is when you do that um, it's going to affect your lighting drastically. It's going to make it really dark. Now in that situation, the only thing I've been able to do is just not do the high definition renderings and not do the 360 panoramic because it does make such a difference in darkness. Not when you're doing a regular, like when you pull up your regular, um, your the, your perspective view like this, it doesn't even show up really on here. And that's why it's so frustrating. So you don't even know it's going to be dark. But when it does, when you do your when you do your high definition re uh, rendering. Uh, it does actually make it darker. So let's say there's that, you know, lower ceiling here that comes down by a foot. Let's say this is 96 inches, and then this comes down to 84. But then there's an indentation that goes back up to the 96. Then it's going to make it so that it's dark over here because that three or that 3D image or that 3D object actually comes all the way around, and then it just makes it so it just what it does is it hides all the light that's coming from up here. Uh, so it makes this area really dark. Now you can put your ceiling light in the middle of that in the middle of that tray ceiling, but really all that does is it just makes that part really, really bright and then it still leaves the rest of it dark. So um, my suggestion to you would be to try to not even do, unless you have another way of doing it, please feel, sh feel free to share. I would love to know how to do this if you know how to do this, but if you have a tray ceiling, blah, 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 uh, that's what I would do is I would just stick with this, do a high quality picture like this and don't even go, don't even try to go in unless you just don't even care about how, how bright it is because once you actually do a high uh, a high definition rendering you can just go to exposure like I showed you earlier and just brighten it up through exposure but then you have a lot of alterations and some of it's really bright versus the part that you really want to focus on that looks better not great but better and so you have a really mixed emotion <laughs> uh, picture here uh, so that's really, I mean, I guess in a nutshell, I'm trying to make, I, I was trying to cram all this into a, a, a shorter video. And so there's a lot of stuff I could go over, a lot more stuff I could go over. Um, so you guys just tell me, please, uh, the, is the stuff that you found to be intriguing, the things that you might know that I don't know that could help, um, anything like that, anything that you think could, is, is noteworthy to comment about, whether it be help. Um, for, for me to make another video um, or, or just to expand on something else that I've already talked about today, please feel free to do that. Love your comments, love your ideas, love to make more videos for you. Um, I hope all this has made sense to you. I know I, I kind of went quickly because I was trying to cram this into one short video. Um, if you want to even know about you know l uh, light attributes about doors and windows and things like that, please feel free to comment below. But uh, I just wanted to get this video out to you guys. I know it's been a while. I've missed you guys, and uh, I look forward to doing another video with you. Uh